Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you a really useful skill, and one that will probably save you a bit of money if you're into large format photography, and that is how to make your own focusing screen. Let's get into it. Right, one of the major things that can go wrong when you're out taking pictures with your large format cameras is to somehow bang or knock and break your focusing screen. Your ground glass screen is probably the weakest element of your camera. Um, you can get screen protectors and things like that that, that help, but I think probably everyone in their large format um, lifetime will break a ground glass screen. Uh, they, they aren't super cheap, um, and it's a really, really useful skill to be able to, so to speak, roll your own. This is the rather sad focusing screen from the Kodak Specialist. As you can see, it's got a big chunk taken out of the corner. Uh, but not only that, it's yellowed, and probably loads of cigarette smoke from back in the day. Um, it's had pencil marks, Sharpie marks, um, all kinds of things on it. It's filthy dirty, and it's also not a very bright screen. So what we're gonna do is we are going to grind a new screen. The first raw material we need is some glass, commonly known as float glass. I've actually got a pack here of seven by five sheets of float glass, which I bought from a picture framing company. But the Kodak Specialist isn't seven by five. The focusing screen is actually half plate which is um, six and three quarters by five and a half, I think. It might be the other way around. I can never remember these things. I'll check on the plate. Uh, four and three quarters by six and a half. There we go, you see. Um, there is, of course, another source of pieces of accurately cut glass. And I have this old box of Kodak photographic plates glass photographic plates. Now, sadly, I tried a couple of them. They are beyond use, but they are the right thickness and they are beautifully optically flat glass. So what I did was I boiled up a kettle and in a washing up bowl, I poured some hot water on a couple of these that had, they were actually ones that I'd tested and not managed to get images on. Um, and scraped and floated off the emulsion. Um, I used an old credit card, really quite simple. So I ended up with a couple of sheets of very clear, very flat and very nice glass. I will now show you exactly how I went about grinding one of these sheets of glass into a new screen. Okay, so in the picture here, you see most of the stuff that I used to do the uh, screen grind. Uh, on the left, you can see silicon carbide powder. And I got that um, from eBay, um, from a place that does stone tumbling kits. And I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, I got some 400 grit and some 600 grit. 400 for the rough grind and 600 to smooth it all off. In the middle, you can see a wooden block, which is about the size of the screen. Now, the counsel of perfection really is to use a big lump of plate glass to do this with, but I couldn't get hold of a piece locally 
And so I actually, uh, well, I'll get onto that in a minute. Um, there's some pretty ordinary double-sided uh, adhesive tape, uh, a piece of glass, obviously, which is an old photographic plate, and uh, some isopropyl alcohol to clean the glass so that the double-sided tape sticks properly. I cut the grinding block from a piece of thick birch plywood. The thickness doesn't really matter, but really the thicker the better, I think. Um, and you can see in this picture here, I covered it with strips of double-sided tape. I then peeled the double-sided tape uh, cover off um, the, the backing and carefully stuck um, the sacrificial grinding um, sheet of glass onto the front. Then I moved close to a supply of water and laid down some newspaper. At this point, I've got to really caution you um, about safety because glass can cut you very, very badly um, and silicon carbide powder is horrible to get on your hands, horrible to ingest and just horrible, um, desperately horrible to breathe in. So our rule will be glove up, get on some mask protection and be very, very careful that you don't cut yourself. I added water with a little hypodermic syringe that I normally use for uh, mixing chemicals for developing. And then, this is towards the end of the procedure. The whole thing took about 20 minutes, around 15 minutes for the initial grind with the uh, 400 grade and then probably five minutes of um, going over with the uh, 600. Um, I have to say I have a rather sore wrist from doing this, but you know, a bit more practice and I'll be able to get it sorted out. As you can see, there was a bit of a horrendous mess created, but because it was all on newspaper, I could pick it all up together and dump it safely. Back to the rather sad old screen in the Kodak Specialist. Um, you might notice that the uh, corners are cut, well, the corners that aren't broken, um, but I decided not to do this in the replacement screen. I might try that on the next screen I do. I didn't want to break a piece of glass trying to get the corners cropped off. Anyway, two screws to remove the clips and in goes the new screen. And now to see the results and oh, you heavy based. There we have it, a nice, bright, new focusing screen. The interesting thing is that this screen is probably two stops, maybe a little bit more brighter than the original. And I believe this is something um, that is quite common, that when you grind your own screens, and you can take a little bit of time to um, do a nice fine grind, um, you end up with a really lovely bright screen. Um, now please do remember all the uh, cautionary stuff. That is, glass really is easy to cut yourself badly on. So you probably should wear thicker gloves than even I did. Um, um, and also remember that the silicon carbide powder is really unpleasant stuff. So I'll repeat again, mask up, glove up, and be safe. But having said that, um, the total cost um, for doing this um, came down to about 15 pounds um, for maybe 16 or 17, if you count the tape. Um, mostly for the silicon carbide powder. Um, but there's enough silicon carbide powder there to do maybe 20 plus screens. So it's actually really a cheap way of getting a new screen. And it means that you could grind a spare, pack it securely, and if you're going out on an expedition with your five by four or your seven by five, then you can take a spare screen with you. 
Um, it's also uh, equally uh, useful to get a piece of acrylic and grind that in the same way and make an unbreakable screen. They're, I don't think they're quite as fine or as easy to focus on, but they will get you out of trouble. But this is an absolutely lovely screen. Um, so much brighter and I love it to bits already and I can't wait to get the 7x5 out now that my leg is feeling better from my tendon problems. So, if you have enjoyed this video, um, perhaps you consider giving me a like. Um, it does the channel an enormous amount of good. Don't forget, I love comments as well. Um, keep those comments coming in. Um, do you think, you know, maybe I should get into the workshop and use my laser cutter and look at etching um, grid lines on one of these screens? See how that goes. Let me know in the comments. And if you really like the channel and you like the kind of output I put out, then think about subscribing. Um, we're a small channel at the moment, but it's kind of, it's getting there slowly but surely. So, take care till I see you again and keep taking pictures.